On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the tomb, the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. <coughs> then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all, all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Uh, and it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they, they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Good morning. It's uh, lovely to see you all on this Resurrection Sunday. So has anyone eaten their Easter eggs now? Anybody? Anyone? No one? Just a few. Elliot has? No one else? Eleanor has? Kay has, okay. I'm afraid I can't remember your name, but you have as well. That's, that's great. You've eaten your Easter eggs, have you? Was it? Not all of them, okay. Just, just some of them. Only one. You've got loads. <laughs> I've got one. You should see the size of it. It's about this big. And I, haven't, I haven't opened it yet. I haven't touched it. Don't feel sorry for me. Yeah, we can do a, yeah, we could do a swap if I... Let, let's, uh, let's pray for a moment. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you so much for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And we pray that you'd help each one of us here to understand... Not just a bit more, but a lot more about what that means for us and for the world. And especially for the lost and broken and hurting people of our community. Because Lord, thank you that the good news of the resurrection of Jesus is not just for us, it's for everyone. So help us Lord to get to know more about you today. And to take that good news to those who need to hear it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, there's, a, there's a lovely old story uh, about some children who were asked to bring some, Easter, uh, some plastic Easter eggs to church on Easter Day filled with something that would symbolize the meaning of the resurrection. I think maybe their Sunday school teacher had set them this challenge. So the group of them went off with these little plastic eggs. And then on Easter Day, they brought them back. Uh, one child's egg contained uh, a very tiny flower to speak of the new life that springs forth at Easter. Uh, another egg contained a crayoned picture of Jesus. Uh, another contained a very tiny nail to remind people about the nails of the cross. And another contained a pebble to represent the stone that had guarded the tomb. Each child had brought something to help the church think about the resurrection. But everyone was absolutely speechless when the egg brought by seven-year-old Brian was opened. You see, Brian had learning difficulties, and as his egg was opened, there was nothing inside. But Brian spoke up loudly and clearly. He said, it's full of emptiness, just like the tomb of Jesus. And his, of course, was the best lesson of all. The angels declared, he is not here, he is risen. And the implications of this statement are literally out of this world. The preaching of the early church was filled with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. In his first recorded preaching 
after Jesus had been raised from the dead, St. Peter stood with the disciples to address the crowd, and he said, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses (laughs) of the fact. He also said, God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. And let's remember, Jesus felt all the agony of death. And that reminds me that because he's God, he knows what it means uh, when we feel pain. He knows what it means to die an agonizing death. Peter said, God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold of him. And St. Paul, St. Paul, before becoming a Christian himself, what did he do? He threw many of those Christians into prison. He gave approval to the killing and arrest of many of those early believers. But after he'd had a dramatic encounter with the risen Lord Jesus, uh, as he was walking along a road one day, Jesus appeared to him and spoke to him. After that, Paul was changed. He wrote much of the New Testament uh, that we have, and he too preached the resurrection. That same Paul, who'd once thrown Christians into prison after he had met with Jesus, preached the resurrection. He preached the message for which he had previously persecuted people. His life had a complete about turn. And in one of his letters, what did St. Paul write? He writes this, and this is just as applicable to us as it was to the first people that he wrote it to. He said, if Jesus has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. I'm not going to ask you to comment on my preaching, that's not the point. He said, if Jesus has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. I mean, if it's true, we might as well go home and go and do something else. In the words of, why don't you go and do something else less boring instead? Paul went on to say, if our hope in Jesus is good only for this life, we are worse off than anyone else. But St. Paul then asserts with confidence, and the confidence of a man who had met with the risen Lord Jesus on that road when he writes, but Christ has indeed been raised. And elsewhere, Paul is clear about the results of believing in this resurrection. He writes, again, this is completely relevant for all of us. And I just, as I read this, as I read these words of Scripture that Paul wrote, I'd like you to ask yourself, quietly in your heart, where do you stand on this? Because this is of eternal importance. That man, St. Paul, that previous persecutor of Christians who met Jesus, had his life transformed, wrote this. He writes, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Paul's also clear about the power for resurrection living. He wrote this, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. So those words spoken by the angels at the empty tomb on that first resurrection Sunday, they're not just for those first believers, they're for us here too. He is not here, he has risen Friends, this is good news. This is really good news that Jesus has risen. It's good news because if he hasn't, we're wasting our time here right now. But he has risen. I mean, does anyone want to waste their time here this morning? I don't. He has risen. Therefore, we're not wasting our time here this morning. William Sangster was the senior Methodist minister at uh, Westminster Central Hall Methodist Church during the Second World War and beyond. And Sunday by Sunday, 3,000 people would gather to hear his passionate preaching. (coughs) In the 1950s, uh, Sangster was diagnosed with 
the neurological disorder muscular atrophy, and it progressively paralyzed his body. It eventually uh, got his vocal cords. But at Easter, just before he died in 1960, I think he was 59 when he died, just before he died, it was Easter, he managed to scribble a note to his daughter, and the note said this. How terrible to wake up on Easter and have no voice to shout, he is risen. But the note ended like this. He said, far worse to have a voice and not want to shout. Far worse to have a voice and not want to shout. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The implications of the resurrection of Jesus are literally out of this world. But the implications impact this world right here, right now. He is risen. If you've put your trust in Jesus, then his spirit lives in you. And if his spirit lives in you, then that is the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. What was dead has come to life. And that includes you and me. That means that when our bodies die, our spirits do not die, we go to be with Jesus. And when he comes back to the earth as he promised to do, we will live with him with the new resurrection body that he's promised to give us. And I don't know about you, but my body, this one, is starting to wear out. I mean, I'm not complaining, but I'm starting to get grey hair. I've been starting to get grey hair for a long time. It's one of the signs of my body wearing out. My neck aches all the time. I'm looking forward to my resurrection body where my neck will not ache. Bring it on. We were dead in our sins, but now we're alive in Christ. But that same power is in us. We sometimes seem to live, though, as if that power that raised Jesus from the dead is not in us, but it is in us. And that has big implications for who we are and what we do and how we live. His resurrection healing power is in us. But that healing power is not for me to heal myself. That resurrection healing power is to be poured out for the lost, for the lonely, for the hurting, for the broken, for the sick in our world. I wouldn't be surprised at all, actually, if this old neck of mine doesn't get healed until I'm with Christ in glory. I would not be surprised at all. That doesn't mean I don't have the faith to believe that it may be. But the spirit of Christ living in me is in me to be poured out just as Jesus was poured out for the lost, the lonely, the hurt, the broken, the sick. And that spirit that lives in me is to be poured out for others in the same way. That spirit living in you is to be poured out for others. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. I'm going to say that again. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. At no point did Jesus try to save himself, and that's really important. At no point did he try to save himself. He was always seeking to save others. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. I just encourage, I'm going to close my eyes for a moment. I just want to encourage you to raise your hands, so I can't see. Raise your hands if you want to do the things that Jesus did. Don't be shy. I want to pray for a moment. Lord, for every person who has raised a hand, whether that's one or two, Lord, I pray that you will encourage us to pour ourselves out for those who need you for the lost, for the lonely, for the sick, the broken, the hurting. Jesus, thank you for your resurrection power living in us. Please pour out that power for those who need it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to finish with these words. 
He is risen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He or she who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. That means that when our bodies stop working, our spirits go on living with him. If we trust in Jesus, we don't need to fear death in this life because he is risen and we will rise with him. And that's good news. Heavenly Father, I'm aware that there are people here who are suffering and hurting right now, maybe recently bereaved, uh, maybe in sickness or pain or, or other, any other trouble. Lord, I pray that you'll please draw alongside each one right now. Lord, we thank you for each one. We thank you that you love them, that you know them, that you care for them, and that you want to be in a relationship with them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your healing power. And Lord, we pray, I pray, that you would bring healing, that you would bring wholeness, that you would bring peace, that you would bring restoration to broken relationships. Lord, that you would bring hope where there seems to be no hope. That you would bring families back together. that you would mend broken bodies. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.